What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today is going to be part 3 or week 3 of the today's course of solar energy system design. In the past week or so, uh, for the past lectures on week 1 or week 2, I've done on basic uh, concepts, uh, theoretical knowledge, definitions, terminologies of what solar energy is all about, the key principles, the working foundation of solar cells modules within themselves, the circuit diagram, and all these sort of applications will now be applied in today's uh, video. So I'm going to be showing, showing you guys some calculation that you can perform and apply these practical uh, knowledge that we have learned in the previous video. If you, haven't, if you haven't checked it out, please do so. And without further ado, let's get to the video. So in weeks three, uh, we're going to look at PV sizing and output. So how would you size a PV based on the, the data that we have? And the output that we're going to require, there's some things that we need to look at. The first thing is the STC, which is the standard testing conditions. For a solar module, it's normally 1,000 watts per meter squared, the solar irradiance. The air mass, air thickness is 1.5. Uh, that's the default value, the cell temperature of the solar modules at SCC is 25 degrees Celsius. Now if you look at NOCT, it's another uh, characteristic uh, test or standardized test that they did for nominal operating cell temperature. It's more of a uh, it's more of a considered realistic value and results because you're you know having at a lower irradiance with a higher temperature so if you look at it you have 800 watts per meter squared with an air mass of 1.5 cell temperature is again 45 degrees celsius so you're dealing with solar modules with higher uh, intense temperature uh, and then with ambient air temperature is also 20 degrees so just have a look at that the increase in temperature as we know it's uh, inversely proportional to the voltage so if increase in temperature decreases the voltage and vice versa for solar irradiance if you increase it the t current of the module is going to increase as well because the intensity is higher so that's why the module current is going to increase and vice versa uh, if you look at the changes as well like I mentioned uh, the, the PV output versus temperature the voltage photovoltage in the x-axis and the photo current in the y-axis so at the voltage level the 20 degrees celsius is at around 4.5 volts give or take with the current at maintaining constant throughout the temperatures uh, that is being increased the current is at i think around four four yeah four amps and then as you increase slightly to 25 degrees to 30 degrees to 35 to 40 degrees celsius the voltage levels drop respectively to around four volts then to you know, three volts then to 2.5 just under 2.5 and then to 1.42 volts at 40 degrees celsius though this goes to show that voltage levels do decrease with higher temperature values but the current does not change because the solar irradiance is not changed it's, it's, it's constant the intensity is being constant in this case some of the key formulas with regard to the temperature being changed throughout the seasons, for example, summer and winter seasons, uh, to calculate the output voltage at the cold temperature, cold climates, you have to add the VOC of the solar module with the voltage deviation, the voltage change that fluctuated, and you have to make sure you have, you have, that you have the obtained uh, value of the lowest recorded temperature climate in your location. Uh, for the output voltage at warm temperature, you need to make sure you, have, you add the VMP, the maximum power point voltage with the voltage deviation and just to make sure that you do record the average high temperature in your location so i'll give an example an example is that we have a voc of 40 volts vmpp of 35 volts temperature coefficient of minus 0 0.175 volts per degree celsius stc the standard testing con condition the temperature of that is 25 degrees celsius we know that the minimum recorded temperature for that location i've just given a random number it's minus 20 degrees celsius and the average high temperature is 30 degrees celsius these are random made up numbers and i've also assumed that the roof temperature that is added because it's already hot uh pre uh, pre default preheated it's going to be hot itself before so i've said it's 15 degrees celsius and then for calculating voltage in cold climate you basically subtract the minimum uh, recorded temperature, which is, I think, minus 20 degrees Celsius. Subtract that with the STC temperature. So minus 20, minus 25 gives us minus 45 degrees Celsius. Then you multiply that value with the temperature coefficient of VOC, which in this case is minus 0 0.175 volts per degree Celsius. Multiply it and get the voltage of 7.87 volts. 
added with the VOC 40 so you get 47.87 volts this is a new value the new temperature uh, the new voltage value in cold climates because this will be able to allow you to size better to choose better wiring in cold climates and to, uh, to choose a better inverter as well so you make sure you don't have you know go above that that voltage level during the winter season for uh, for the summer season on the other hand you do the same thing the same procedure but first you do is you have to add the uh, the average high temperature with the rooftop already at a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius with 30 degrees Celsius that gives you 45 degrees Celsius subtract with the STC temperature of 25 degrees Celsius you have 20 multiply that again with the temperature coefficient of minus 0 0.175 the new, the new value uh, voltage is minus 3.5 volts adding with the VMPP of 35 volts with the, with the lower value now decrease of 31.5 volts it makes sense because at warmer temperatures as you, as you increase the temperature the voltage levels will decrease in this case it has decreased now you might be wondering why not the VOC and why the VMPP well the VOC is already high temperature value uh, voltage value and then since you're going to be using it uh, which is not really necessary because you have the inverter uh, minimum turn on voltage to need needing to operate at that level and since you're already dealing with the VMPP which is a higher voltage level you're going to be uh, getting a way to m maximize and meet the the required level of the of the turn on voltage for the inverter sizing so this is why it makes sense to go with VMPP in summer and VOC for the winter the alternate method is if you have the temperature coefficient as a percent value rather than a voltage rather than the voltage value is for example you repeat the same steps one and two after multiplying with the temperature coefficient you'll have a percent value let's say 16 percent instead of 16 volts so you're going to add that 16 percent with the 100 or well, with 100 and that gives you 116 percent so then you just multiply with the new uh, with, the, with the multiply with the voltage value the VOC or the VMP whatever it is for cl for cold or climate or warm uh, conditions climate conditions and that value you'll you'll get it respectively so just that for in the alternative method you just have a percent of uh, percentage co temperature coefficient rather than the voltage uh, value of of the temperature coefficient the shading so now when it comes to shading to measure the shading there's uh, there's two types number one is the solmetric Sennai digital instrument it's very expensive but it gets the job done it's much quicker but more accurate you can even find online results uh, lots of web searches on sol solmetric Sennai they provide tools to do it automatically for you you don't need to do any you don't need to do or perform any calculations so very accurate and very reliable another method is the solar pathfinder instrument it's a manual uh, tripod setup with you know you being present and and then uh, re re recording the shade th during the month or the year and then based on that you know you, you have to uh, repeat it to, to gain more accuracy result more accurate results so these are two different types it, the, the solar pathfinder is old school uh, modern in the past historical uh, method of a mode of finding uh, shade while soul metric is the new up-to-date traditional uh, digital era of finding or calculating the shade um, when it comes to the sun it's lower uh, it's lower in the sky the sun in the winter months because the day is shorter uh, compared to the summer months where the day is longer the sun is going to be higher in the sky and then if there's any shade that you experience during the summer months then there is almost guaranteed that you're going to be finding shade in the winter month when in the winter months as well so just a little you know uh, background fact or information to keep in mind so these are the two instruments as you can see on the left hand side of the figures the soul metric sun eye portable device handheld where you can just enter your location it will you know do the automatic sketchings provide you the data and the results of how much percent of shading is lost throughout the month or year and how you can uh, for a specific location on the right hand side is the toolkit for the solar pathfinder that's a tripod with the global uh, um, with the global uh, ha headset or you can say like a, a cover for the the mapping of the shading that you have to do it on the chalk you know you have to trace it along the the lines based on how much shade is covering the region i'll show you more in this slide so you can see you'll have the specific location that is facing for due south because you know this is the average sun pass for each month with the latitude or the the range is 37 to 43 degrees north of latitude in the northern hemisphere you have to use this type of uh, apparatus if you're in the southern hemisphere you have to use southern dot latitude and then based on you know what's the tilt angle or the, the latitude angle 
At the bottom, as you can see, it's the solar time. So 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7, 8, 9, 10, afternoon, then evening, 5, 6, 7 p.m. So at the bottom, you can see that. And then on the middle, or in the middle, you can see that there is the uh, vertically going down. Uh, at the top is this winter months, so December, January, November, February. And then as you go at the bottom, May, June, July, you have the summer months. And the middle, March, October, September, April, you have the sp spring and the fall season. And based on that, you know, these are the rays that show the solar time, which is going from left to right. And then from top to, 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 top to bottom, uh, vertical lines are the arcs showing the months and how much of it is being covered by shading. So, for example, if there's a shaded that you trace, uh, you know, that you place in your location, this is a line that you're getting and you trace it. And based on that, you have to then determine how many hours of shade is lost per month based on the, the shading here. Uh, so, so for example, to calculate the shading, uh, let's say in November that the numbers four, five, six, seven, seven, eight that you uh, shade, and then you see the numbers associated alongside to add up to 37% of sunlight lost in that month, November, and you, and you do this and repeat this for the rest of the shaded months that let's say you find in January, and December, uh, and during the summer even as well. So May, June, July, whatever it is. And then you want to multiply the annual sun hours in your location with the percentage loss of each month. So for example, how do you find the annual sun hours? Well, we multiply the average daily hours of sun available per day in your location with the number of days in a month. So for example, 2.1 kilowatt hours per day I receive in my location. Multiply with 31 days in November. Multiply that with the month of respectively loss, which is 37% for November. And I get 24 hours full sun hours that is lost or 24 kilowatt hours. And you repeat this for every single month and even for the months that don't have shading. For example, if June doesn't have any shading, that's going to be 0%. So you mark it as 0%. And do and you keep on doing that for annually. Do the sum. So 0 plus 10 plus 5 plus 6%, 6 kilowatt hours plus this, this, that. I, I took a random figure, I made it up, 143.7 kilowatt hours annually, lost annually. And then what you do is you want to find out your annual insulation. So like I said, you can use PV watts or whatever online resource tool to know how many hours of sunlight is available at your location annually. I've chosen 1569.5 kilowatt hours. You subtract these values to get the true annual insulation available taking into account the, uh, how many hours of sunlight lost annually, I get the value of 1425.8 kilowatt hours per year. Then you divide the values with true annual insulation with the annual insulation uh, that is without the sunlight lost. And I have 90.8%, which means that 90.8% of the time, I'm going to have sunlight available. 9.2% is lost due to shading. That percentage is lost annually due to shading. And that's pretty much it. You don't, you don't really have to calculate this, but because you already have online software such as PVSYS, Helioscope that do it for you. Just have to, you know, mention the parameters, fill in the blanks of details and data, and then the, and then the software does it for you. But in this case, if you want to know how it, how it actually goes on, what are the things you need to know it and take care of, this is the step-by-step -step, uh, uh, instruction sheet and the formulas in order to get a better idea of the shading losses that you can calculate. So overall, this is the video. This is the end of the video, guys. Hopefully you guys like it. Please like, comment, subscribe. Take care, stay safe. Until then, bye-bye.